In this video, I'll show you how to model a power function when graphed on log paper. The question reads, a test of a certain electronic device shows it to have an output current represented as I versus input voltage V as shown in the following table. Plot the given empirical data and try to find an approximate formula for Y in terms of X. To do this question, you'll need to plot it on linear graph paper first then on semi-log paper, and then lastly, on pure log paper. This will help us to determine if the table of values represents a power function or an exponential function. The difference between a power function is that the variable is raised to a number, whereas in an exponential function, the variable is in the exponent position. That being said, on linear graph paper, the data looks like this. And this suggests that the equation may either be a power function or an exponential function, since the line is sort of curved. On our second graph, the one on semi-log paper, this suggests that the function is probably a power function, since the graph is still curved on the semi-log paper. Notice the curve. And lastly, on pure log paper, since the graph is linear, as you can tell, we can assume that the equation has the form i is equal to a v to the power of n. What type of function is that? If you guessed power function, you're right, because our input v is the base, and the exponent is a number. Now let's rewrite this function i for current is equal to our initial a times v to the power of n. And remember, at this stage, we are trying to find out a plausible n and a value. So far, all we've done is decipher which model to use. Now, if I ln both sides, I end up with ln i is equal to ln a v to the power of n. This can be split up using the rules of logarithms, namely the product rule, as ln a plus ln v to the power of n. And using the power rule, this n can be placed in front of ln v, giving us ln i is equal to ln a plus n times ln v. What I'll do next is substitute two points from the table, let's choose points 2 and 5, into the model that I just created below. And the reason that we're doing this is so that we can simultaneously find a and n by using a method similar to solving a linear system. I'll show you what I mean below. So, at 2 and 15 decimal 4, we get the following. This is my voltage, and this number is my i. So I have ln of 15 decimal 4 is equal to ln a, which we don't know, plus n times ln at 2. And our goal by doing this is to solve for a and n. And we can do that by substituting another point, which we chose 5 and 58 decimal 1, then simultaneously solving for a and n. So this time we have at 5 and 58 decimal 1, going to rewrite these right underneath one another. To solve for either a or n, I'm going to start off by subtracting the top equation with the bottom equation. If I subtract the two, let's start off with this one. ln of 15.4 minus ln of 58 decimal 1 is equal to negative 1 decimal 327. Negative 1 decimal 327. And that's equal to subtracting ln a from ln a gives us 0. And subtracting n times ln 2 with n times ln 5, that's like saying n ln 2 minus n ln 5. And using the quotient rule, we can write n times ln 2 over 5. n times ln 2 over 5, well, let's find out what ln 2 over 5 is equal to. That gives us negative 0 decimal 916. 
negative 0 decimal 916 n. We divide both sides now by this number to find out what our n is. Therefore, n is equal to negative 1 decimal 327 divided by what we just found, and that's equal to 1.448, or in other words, 1 decimal 45. We can now plug this number in to this equation. So we found our n, that's great. We need to also find our a, and we can easily do that by substituting this number into one of these equations. Let's use the first one. We have ln of 15 decimal 4 is equal to ln a plus 1.45 ln at 2. We can solve for a quite easily. Bring this over where we have ln of 15 decimal 4, this number, minus that number. 1 decimal 4, 5, ln 2. This gives us 1.729. 1 1.729 is equal to ln A. We raise both sides as powers to base E. That cancels out. And we're left with E to the power of what we just found. And that's approximately 5.636. 5.636, or simply 5.64. So I found my a value and my n value. The formula that we had produced was i is equal to a v to the power of n. i is equal to 5.64 v to the power of 1.45. Now let's test how good this formula is compared to the empirical data that was in the table. Remember, this is our theoretical equation. Here's our original data, and I'm going to substitute 1, 2, and 3 to see how it matches with the empirical data. 5.64, and our v is 1, to the power of 1.45. That gives us 5.64. A little bit off, but not so much. Let's try 2. I end up with 15 decimal 4. That's very similar. When we try 3, we end up with 27 decimal 7. Not too bad. And I can assume that for 4 and 5, they're very similar as well. And so there you have it. That is how to model a power function when graphed on log paper.